fair franchising. Most people, when they hear the words fair franchising, they focus on the first word, fair. And for obvious reason, what is fair franchising? They hear the words fair franchising, and if they come to an education session on fair franchising, or we address it at an AHOA business meeting, they think, I want to find out what's fair in my franchise system, right? But yet, the words fair franchising, even though it's a business concept, even though it's designed to look at what the terms are in your franchise agreement, in the FDD, the franchise disclosure document, at the same time, the words fair franchising evoke a lot of emotion. When I say the words fair franchising, I can look around this room and I can see facial expressions, body language, the expressions in your eyes. And what's so interesting, I say fair franchising and I see puzzlement, maybe disbelief, frustration, anger, fear. Why is that? Two simple words, fair franchising, and it evokes all this emotion. How can two words, fair franchising, cause disbelief, cause puzzlement, cause frustration and anger? That's a very good question because, and I think, unfortunately, we might all know the answer. We might know the answer because even though franchising allows so many small business owners an amazing opportunity to start businesses and to get out into the business world and, and support their families, in recent years, Franchising has become increasingly unfair. And so as a result, you have to wonder, why isn't more being discussed on this topic? Why is fair franchising such an emotional topic, but yet it's not being addressed? Have you under, ever wondered why the franchisors themselves don't really discuss fair franchising? Could it be that it's unbalanced? Could it be that it's unstable and they all know it? At AHOA, we are hoping to make that difference because right now you take the words fair franchising and it's like two magnets that are repulsed. Two magnets that are repulsed, okay? And there was a discussion by Neil here earlier about some of the things that you know are unfair. You know, 15 years ago, as I understand it, you would get a fee statement and there might be three line items. There might be royalties, marketing, sponsorship fees, miscellaneous. How many of you today are getting fee statements where there's 30? or 40 items of fees listed in your fee statements? No. I see hands raised, yes. And how many of you are experiencing mandated vendors and you're paying double, triple, quadruple the price if, as a, a compared to if you just went out in the marketplace and bought that product or service? And you have to wonder, if these franchisors are buying and, and soliciting these vendors to do volume discounts, how come you're paying more? That seems unfair. And so at AHOA, we are trying to address this. And one solution that we are working on is the AHOA 12 Points of Fair Franchising. Now, I have been studying and speaking on fair franchising for more than 10 years. And the AHOA 12 points of fair franchising is still one of the best tools out there to address the increasing unfairness in some of these franchise agreements 
in some of these FDDs. Well, let's first talk about what does FAIR stand for? Okay, this is what our goal is. That it would be fair and balanced, that there would be accountability by the franchisors with what they're doing with your fees, what they're doing with the rebates and commissions from the vendors that they're making you buy products and services from, that there be improved disclosure on everything that's being done in the system, and that, of course, there's reason dialogue on the concerns that are raised by you, our members, who are out there day after day dealing with these franchise agreements, dealing with these practices that have become unfair. But we need your help and engagement to, to address this. We are striving to get rid of the unfair to turn this into fair franchising. What is the vision? That you are a HOA members will be able to go to your franchisors, that you'll be able to negotiate the terms of your franchise agreement that are most important to you, and that they will listen, that you will actually have negotiation power to change terms that do not work for your system, for your circumstances, for your location, for your site. And I have a vision that AHOA, through its 12 points of fair franchising, will be able to start taking a position to say to the franchisors that these mandated vendors, the undisclosed kickbacks, and I use that word strongly, the undisclosed kickbacks that they're receiving from mandated vendors, that that either has to stop or it has to be fully disclosed and the money returned to the franchisees. That is only fair, that only is common sense. And that when you signed your franchise agreement 10 years ago, that they cannot keep adding new fees every year through your operations manual. That they cannot continue to add fee on top of fee because your ROIs are going down and down and down while their revenues are continuing to increase and increase and increase. It's time to address this. That is the vision, that we as a HOA can stand strong. You, as our members, have the ability to negotiate and have the ability to make a difference in this industry. Together, we are stronger, and if we can stand united, we can move that needle. So let's look and talk about AHOA's 12 points very quickly. I know you at the convention, we had the QR codes, many of you downloaded it, but let's admit it, you're busy, you probably didn't have a chance to read most of them. So let's do a quick overview. The first one's just on termination rights and liquidated damages. How many of you love to pay 36 months of liquidated damages if you have to terminate early? I'm sure all of us do, right? 36 months. And let's look at how, how long does it really take a franchisor to replace a property, okay? We put in the AHOA 12 points that it should be six months. Now, maybe some franchisors it takes longer, but that's where the dialogue comes in. That's where you have the negotiation power depending on your brand depending on what you're looking to do. The second one, impact encroach, encroachment and cross-brand protection. Again, that's to give you a reasonable area protection around your hotel, and that they cannot come and put right across the street a similar brand by the exact same franchisor that they just changed a few words to make it sound like it was a different property or a different flag. So that's what that's designed for. Then we have minimum performance and quality guarantees. Number four, quality assurance, inspections, and guest surveys. 
Number five, this is what we discuss, vendor exclusivity rebates and affiliated companies as vendors. And those rebates, again, that's the concept where they get a kickback by making you buy from certain vendors. Number six, full transparency of the franchisee funded programs and fees. Tell us what you're doing with these fees. Number seven, maintaining and building the relationships with the franchisees, with the franchisee associations. Number eight, dispute resolution. Many of you, and maybe you're aware of this, maybe you're not, many of you are precluded from going to court if you have a dispute with your franchisor. They mandate arbitration in their backyard. In other words, you have to go to their state, use their arbitration group to resolve your disputes. And as you might predict, those results are unfortunately sometimes unfair. Number nine, venue and choice of law clauses. We're advocating that wherever the facility is located, if there's a dispute, that's where it's heard based on the laws of the state that that facility is, is housed. Number 10, franchisee sales, ethics, and practices, that it just has to be honest. If they're telling you one thing before you sign your franchise agreement, let's make sure it's honest so you're not misled. Number 11, transferability, that you can transfer with a new purchaser and it's a fair process. Number 12, sale of the franchise system, hotel brands. That as franchisees, if your franchisor is gonna sell the flag, that they have to give you advance notice. So that's the 12 points of fair franchising, actually pretty straightforward. So what's next? Education, insight, and empowerment. Um, we are planning to do a 12-part series that we, will be filled, that we will be videotaping and posting on our website to go beyond the 12 points. In other words, we'll take each of these 12 points we just addressed and do a deep dive into them um, so you understand the key takeaways of each of them. And we also will be working with you. We would love your input, um, your feedback, your stories, on what's happening in your systems because then we can address it accordingly. And you see there's an, an email here, franchise at ahoa.com. Please send us your comments, send us your remarks. Um, if you would like to download the 12 points of fair franchising, you can do that. These are the revised ones. Here's a QR code for you. So again, thank you for joining us in this effort. This is one of our top priorities this year because we've heard you. We've heard your concerns. We've heard these stories. We're working with the legislatures in these states to address it, um, but we need your help. We need you to talk to us so that we can do what's best for you for the franchise systems and make sure that this is a win-win for everyone.